Hey, it's John and Mike, Peru-Dudes.com, and we have two, wow, thickhead pours in front of us. What is this, Michael? You said, I got a beer to taste. Let's do this. It uh, smells nice. Uh, this, it's definitely a, a snapshot of that right there. I this think. is a, um, a British Dark Mild, actually. Hmm. So, um, shooting for another low ABV beer. Um, it actually came out much darker than I was really <laughs> shooting for, but I think you can smell that on the aroma. Yeah. Um, I'll go with the recipe in a second, but I gotta take a quick sip. Mm. So tasty. So this beer started at about 10.43 and ended at about 10.15, so it's only about 3.8% ABV, which is right in the ballpark for like a British mild, um, a dark mild, mm. uh, but this beer has a Point, a, big, a bigger point than just being being that. So yeah. let's go over the malt bill for a minute. So it's, um, this is three and a half gallon batch. So it's Golden Promise, about 79%. It's Karistan malt, I love that stuff. It's 35 love um, at about 7%. It's uh, 450 crisp chocolate malt at another okay. 7%. And then it's got some amber malt in it for okay. 7%, which is very <laughs> interesting because I always sort of, in my mind, I'd never worked with amber malt. It's about 27 love a bun. Amber malt is actually more like a biscuit malt than it is, in my mind, like this reddish, right. it, it, you know, this that it sort of imbues red colors or in caramelly to amber yeah. malt. But yeah. it's not, it's actually like a super toast. It's Toasty. sort of like, um, like victory or biscuit. This is the English version of those things because biscuit is a Belgian malt. Um, so anyway, it's amber malt, which gives you a lot more of that bready toastiness. Um, think of it like a, almost like a Munich malt without the that weird Munich sweet edge to Melanoidins. it. Melanoidins. Melanoidins, yes, thank yeah. you. Yeah, so it's almost all toast. I fermented this baby with uh, Mangrove Jack's Empire oh, Ale. Oh, yeah. So that's something I wanted to try. I had it, I bought it. So this is like an English alias, which is actually pretty low attenuation, which, which works good in a beer want, like this. So there's want. a lot of like yeah. leftover stuff in here yeah. helping to keep your, and I, ferment, I mashed it at about 155, 156 in order to keep the body there or, yeah. or hold up my final gravity a little bit. So um, what do you think about the beer? And then we'll oh, talk about the Well, hums. it's delicious. It's delicious. Um, certainly has that uh, low ABV quality mm. to it. Um, just funny how, um, I don't know, it's, it's, um, it's just real mellow, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's a yeah. very easy drinking yeah. beer. Um, a lot it's almost of, like the aroma is more potent than the flavor. And the flavor, yeah. right, yeah. I get a lot of, uh, almost like a lot of roasty notes right off the bat. I wonder if, you know, maybe that's that toast from the amber. I don't know. It's, yeah. it's different than... I get almost a little bit of, like, dry coffee out yeah. of it. Yeah. Um, but there is a little bit, a subtle hint of, like, a, almost like a chocolate cereal type of quality, yep. like a cocoa crispy or something like that, you know? It's, uh, it reminds me of that other low ABV beer that you yeah, made yeah, yeah. a few months ago. Um, and it's, it's, it's interesting to note that and this one, and then just typical beers that we drink, that there is a little bit of an alcohol bite that's missing from this. And I'm not yeah, saying yeah. it's yeah, yeah, yeah. huge. I yeah. mean, like, you know, the, the bigger yeah. the beer, certainly the more warming the alcohol presence. Yep. Even at something that's in that five to 6% range, yeah. You know, it it it's a flavor component that's it's missing here. It's it's right, almost yeah. like I'm detecting the yeah. absence of it. Yeah, yeah, in yeah. Because yeah. it, it brings a couple different effects. It's, it's got a thinning quality. The solvent certainly hmm. changes the way some of these flavor compounds interact on your palate. Uh, and then some to some extent, ethanol sort of brings a little bit of a sweet type of perception to the palate too. So without it there, you're really, I, mean, I think the amber malt's like really crushing that, <laughs> that dry toasty thing. But the real reason why I made this beer, right, is uh, the hops. Oh. I wanted to try the hops here. Okay. So this beer, <laughs> <laughs> this beer is all fuggles. <laughs> Good for you. So it's all fuggles. Look at you. Um, it's, uh, so it's about 24 IBUs at 60 minutes, and then with 15 to go, I toss in um, about ha uh, half an ounce, and at time zero, another half ounce. And these fuggles were almost 4% uh, alpha acid. So three different additions, spreading it out through the whole thing, because I wanted to have, um, normally in a beer like this, I wouldn't uh, put late hops in there, because I just want it to be all malt. Yep, yep. But I think that's pushing 
you know, the maltiness is pushing through the, any hop aroma. Um, but anyway, so knowing that piece of information, what do you think about the, I, the hop character? I, I think that if you didn't tell me, I would just say it's some kind of English variety yeah. that complements the... Uh, the malt. Now I'm thinking to myself, like, are you getting the earthy dirt that you it don't is, like? It is. Yeah, it is very <laughs> earthy. Um, <laughs> at first I thought it was, like, you know, I mean, it, there's still a lot of that, the malt, that toast character. Mm. But I think after you s swallow it and you go, oh, well, there's a little bit of chocolate coffee there. Then you get that fugly, <laughs> um, fugly. <laughs> that herbal, earth-like presence it's just like a, like a really dry hay or something it's just yeah you know what i mean yep. it's not totally unpleasant but it's not the good news is i don't i still don't <laughs> like fuggles so it's a it's a worthwhile Things haven't changed. it's a worthwhile experiment fuggles still just isn't my my jam you think it'd be better with ekg yeah because i think ekg has some of that herbalness but it doesn't have the earthiness and ekg tends to bring in just a little bit of a floral component, yeah, right. Where this so. is all earth and herbal, yeah. And I think you just need a little bit of that, like when you put your nose in a bag of hops, yeah. that flowery, sweet green, green flowery green, yeah. hop thing that you get from mm. EKG. And sometimes with EKG too, I get a little bit of maybe it's my mind playing with it, but you get a little bit of like a, a tea-like quality out of it, mm. which is you know a little bit sweet and and you know um, it's just different. This is just it's a really dry hop, if you will. And it's, um, you know, I guess it would work and just not for me. Just not for me. <laughs> so um, what are you going to do with all this beer? <laughs> well, the good news is I only brew these things in small batches, right? So <laughs> this is um, um, actually uh, my wife wanted to try a pint of this uh, just like an hour ago when I was setting up the kegs and stuff. And so, you know, she said, oh, she liked it. She was like, this is good. So I mean, she'll drink some of it. I'll, I'll, I'll drink some of it. I'm, I'm intrigued by it. I think the thing is with beers like this, too, is, um, you know, we brew, we package, and then we carbonate, I carbonate fast and try to get ready for, for doing this. Yep. But, um, you know, in a couple of weeks, see how this settles out, see how the flavors meld a little bit more. Um, I, only, I can only suspect that af as more of the malt, and there's still like particulate in there. The beer cleans itself up a little bit, given some more time. I can only imagine actually the fuggle is going to stand out more and be a uh, just even more earthy <laughs> so we'll see how that is um you know i'm an experimentalist so that's how i get through this beer is enjoying it uh, like in a couple of weeks from now and see taking how it's notes changed, you know and uh progressing but always. it is like the only like three and a half percent beer i have in the house so this is a perfect beer for when you need to have a beer but it's not really the right time to have a beer <laughs> have one of these all right 11 a.m sipper oh, yeah, there, exactly there you go Mm. Well, I'm proud of you. Uh, good with the leap of using Fuggles. Um, I don't know if it, it didn't change your mind, but uh, that's okay. I think that small steps, you know. Who baby knows? Steps, maybe steps, baby steps. Maybe, uh, maybe the next run will be a blend of EKG and Fuggles. There you go. See if yeah. you can find yeah. a, a use for it. Yeah. I'm just uh, I'm wondering if you'll just be like, well, <laughs> it, is only, it only goes early in the boil and then EKG towards the end to really, you know, boost that flavor. Yep. Um, all right. Well, there you go. That is a. So you're calling this a dark English mild? Dark English mild. Dark English mild with fuggles, and uh, it's getting high marks across the bar here for sure. So again, in our pursuit of lower alcohol beers and uh, Mike's pursuit of trying to win over himself for the English fuggle hop, um, who knows? Uh, it's a uh, <laughs> it's a long epic tale which continues to have more chapters. Um, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel because we do this kind of thing every single week. For John and Mike, brew-dudes.com. Brew on. Cheers.